Hello and welcome. You're listening to the CNET UK podcast. This is episode 363 for the 8th of November 2013. When we say hello to the Google Nexus 5, goodbye to BlackBerry's boss, we go all hipster with the world's fastest 4G, and we quake in fear as Tesco quite literally steals our faces. I'm Richard Trenholm. Joining me this week is Andrew Hoyle. All right. Speaking of faces. And I have got a face. Got a face. I have got a face. Yeah. And someone else who has a face is Luke Westway. Yeah, all right, facey. All right. <laughs> good, to, yeah. the, good to have you both here. Bringing that face in here. As always. Right, we are as always filming the podcast, so check out the video on CNET or on YouTube.com slash CNET to scan our faces. Right, let's kick things off with Crave. So the Nexus 5 32 gigabyte black model has already sold out. That's only six days after it went on six sale. Six days. Oh. Six days. That was quick. That was quick moving products. Mm. It's not as quick as last year, though, when the Nexus 4 sold out in like half three, an hour, half yeah. an hour, 30 minutes. Yeah, there's oh, some ridiculous like number. And then stayed sold out for like, what, six months? Yeah. Yeah. That's because yeah. they only had one. Then they'd get like <laughs> 20 more in stock, and then we'd write about, oh, we've got more in stock, and then immediately they'd be out of stock. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because of us. Because of we us. start a run on them. It's our fault. So, I mean, so, I mean there's, so there's, there's four types of Nexus 5 you can potentially get, right? There's the black, the white, and the 16 gig and 32 gig, right? In so this is colors. one of them that sold out. Yeah, this is just the 32 gig black one. Uh, you can still get the uh, 32 gig in white. Um, and it says stock will leave the warehouse by 8th of November, which is the day after tomorrow, mm -hmm. or tomorrow when you're actually listening to this, which will be yeah. Ooh, well, Friday. Let's that, yeah, good, good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, well, the cheaper, that's £300, 16 gig model is still in stock in both colours. So. so just buy that one. It's uh, cheaper as well. Get the 32. Definitely no, get the 32. it's more expensive. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's, only 30, it's only 40 quid more to double your storage, and because there's no micro SD card support, that's oh. not, that is a no-brainer. You okay. definitely should do that. Oh, I mean, right, I didn't, go. I've got one here, and this is 16 gig, and we bought that SIM free. Nice. That's what I know. No brainer, yeah. says Hoyle. <laughs> uh, well, we'll talk a little bit more about the Nexus 5 and also KitKat a little bit later on. So, um, why don't we move on? What else has been happening this week? So, uh, apart from Luke playing with my phone. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. I can't. I'm far too uncomfortable with what you might do. Have you okay, been sexting I'll, I'll again? Give this, give this back. There's near porn on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Blackberry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you were a little quick off the mark to say that. that I was a little, a little quick off the mark. <laughs> there's no, there's no porn. <laughs> Definitely no porn. Yeah. Uh, so uh, BlackBerry's on. <laughs> the phone's from... been stashed away, and he just flung it across the room, so we can't. Possibly <laughs> get it. It's gone. broken. There's nothing on there's it. Nothing now. <laughs> That smash screen's not going to show anything. <laughs> Definitely not my junk. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or it'll freeze on something. And they won't be able to shift the image. I, no, I really hope not. So, what, what's what BlackBerry been up so to? So, BlackBerry is on some tough times. Uh, it was looking to be stuff. bought out by a company called Fairfax for yes. whole $4.7 billion, yeah. which is after BlackBerry basically said, we've got nothing left and anyway. we need to be bought out. And um, But Fairfax themselves did not raise enough of that money from the banks because why would they want to throw good money after bad? Mm. Well, well, speaking quite. of which, Fairfax is, is uh, instead of buying the whole company for, for you know, five billion or whatever it was, mm. uh, they are injecting one billion into the company to keep it going. So uh, good luck with that, guys. Yeah. So, yeah. Well done. Instead of acquiring it, we'll just throw cash at it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fairfax. I don't know. I assume Fairfax is a maker of fax machines. And maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. <laughs> it's fax yeah. machines. Yeah. Fair trade fax yeah. machines. Black, Blackberry make... is, is like the most technologically advanced thing yeah, I've ever seen. Like, my God. <laughs> the things they can do. So um, we have to acquire so, so Fairfax is actually the majority shareholder in Blackberry. They have 10% uh, of, uh, of Blackberry shares and uh, they tried to get together a consortium. There was a rival bid as well that was supposed to be coming together, which never actually happened, which was uh, Mike Lazaridis, the, the original founder, mm. and uh, Qualcomm. The, the chip maker. Lazaridis back, back, back in, in the saddle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fancy, go well. Fancied another go. <laughs> yeah. like, guys, I, I think yeah. I know what I did wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, I've figured it out, <laughs> yeah. so it won't happen again. I know what I did wrong. Absolutely. Well, they have actually changed boss, haven't they? Again, so, so Th Thorsten Hines. Yeah, he's out. He's, he's out. out yeah. oh, I liked Thorsten. Yeah, really? he was my favourite six foot five German engineer CEO. He's great. Well, well. in the top five. <laughs> um, Who's the new guy? Uh, the new guy is a guy called John Chen. Isn't he an interim? 
CEO. He is in the interim, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so. he might be the last CEO. I mean, that was interim, mm-hmm. not in trim. Not like he's in great shape. He does not look like in good shape, uh, though. Peter Chow. Is it Peter Chow from HTC? He's in trim. Is that what oh, I'm thinking of, or is that Qualcomm? Or oh, you're thinking of Nvidia, Nvidia, Nvidia guy. Nvidia, yeah, it. yeah. He's um, yeah, he's ripped. He's got cool tattoos too. Mm. Wow. But uh, anyway, anyway. Thorsten Hines, um, I don't know what physical shape he's in, and I'm not sure it matters <laughs> because BlackBerry is not in good shape. No, no. Well, this, so this guy, this guy John Chen, who's the uh, the new uh, the new interim CEO, he uh, he has experience of turning companies around. He used to run a company called Sybase, which he turned around and then mm. sold for uh, many billions after he'd been in charge. And he's also he's uh, he's been on the board of Disney and Wells Fargo and um, some other companies as well. And he was also uh, he served in the U.S. He's, he's been advised to the U.S. government, so he's a guy who knows what he's doing. Okay. He is, by all accounts, a cool professional businessman. Exactly. So let's see what he hands. can do. That's yeah. what, what he needs, right? Steady yeah. hand on the tiller. Yeah. And he has already said that um, that, that he hasn't sort of ruled out switching to Android but he has said that uh, they're definitely not getting out of phones that's ridiculous to even talk about that mm-hmm. and uh, he said that uh, you know it's possible to make a switch but uh, they, they, they're not they're not you know it's premature I'd love them just to see what happens because it's it's broken anyway so mm-hmm. why not have some fun just hand over the reins to a 10 year old and just see what happens because <laughs> I well, think whatever happens it will be brilliant I was, they, could, uh, they could do it as a reality show and get a bit of money from it they could they could yeah. actually get that money back they need by yeah. selling the format what yeah. should we start making uh, I was reading a bit, uh, actually, like an interview um, or like a piece on John Chen, the new boss, mm. and uh, apparently what he did at Sybase, which was the failing company that he took over mm. and, and completely turned it around, was he he sort of like looked at stopped trying to do what the company was um, like failing to compete in, and basically did something completely new, which I think was wireless technology. Which okay. So it was quite dull, but yeah. but it was it was several years before anyone else had even tried to do that, and mm. everyone was saying like, oh no, it's not going to happen. So I'd quite like to see him do that with BlackBerry, something so futuristic and ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like invest in the person carrying suction tube now, <laughs> and in five years' time, BlackBerry will be the biggest suction tube provider. And um, well, they invented the know. smartphone, so why can't they invent the suction tube? I mean, why not be first into that market? That is an extremely yeah. sensible sentence that you just said. Exactly, it is. There is nothing you can disagree with that in that. Okay, then cool. And uh, what else has been going? We'll keep an eye out on uh, on BlackBerry. We'll keep you posted on how we how that will. goes. It's yeah, not well. looking good. The yeah. poor chap. Mm. Someone should give the old yellow treatment. <laughs> give it, well, give it's, it a dignified end. It's, it's got to be said that the, the, the more uncertainty there is, and the fact that they've only got a temporary <laughs> CEO and stuff, getting rabies being shot by a child. <laughs> yeah. it's not, that's not a dignified end. <laughs> no more BlackBerry. Is my business. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Anyway, so, yeah. mm. EE is launching a 300 megabyte a second LTE <laughs> advanced network in the UK. Holy now, EE crap. claims that that is the fastest LTE network in the world. Wow. wow. Which big, is, big words, EE. They are some big, big words and they are some big numbers. Them's for fighting fast talks. speeds. Uh, at the moment, only for businesses in Silicon Roundabout in East London. Texas. The hipster part where everyone has hipster heartland. ironic. Mustaches. Everyone mm. has an ironic mustache in a startup company. Yeah. Yep. Even when it's not November. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I have. I'm not, not kidding. I have occasionally been to uh, been to Old Street, and uh, I, I, I went once, and I saw, I'm not kidding. I saw a guy on a penny farthing. Oh wow. yeah, I, I saw a guy go through Hyde Park in one of those, mm. and just wanted to put a stick in his spokes and see him just <laughs> fly over the front of that enormous wheel. Well, it, a stick would have got in the spokes eventually. I mean, where else are the stick's going to go? The, the wheel is so massive. Eventually, <laughs> a stick's going to end up there. <laughs> he gets, just he gets home, and the sticks and small children and cars <laughs> all kind of in there. It's so it's big and it spins so much, but it's all, it's it has its own gravitational yeah. pull. <laughs> you go, it's like a propeller. <laughs> Actually, blows the bicycle sideways. Anyway, yeah. So, but I mean, the advantage of this is that uh, it will roll out to regular people. It's no, it's only for business at the first. It's only a particular Huawei Cat Six dongle as well at the moment. Yeah, but we will see phones by uh, next summer. And yeah, and they're going to do summer. a bit of a, a bigger rollout in 2014. Although I don't think they've said it's going to be for public use yet. I think is it still for business? It, no, it, I think it is. Yeah. So it's it's just for select business at the first, and then I think it's for general consumers next year. Um, but you know, it is uh, you will need an LTE advanced phone, oh. of which there are very few at the moment. I believe there's an LTE edi- a, a edition of the Samsung Galaxy S4 in Korea, which is one of the few places they actually have LTE. I believe it's a uh, uh, Korea and Moscow, if I'm, uh, I think LTE it's just Seoul and Moscow, are the only two places that have proper commercial hmm. um, cool. LTE advance. Although it is being trialed in lots of different places, including uh, New York, I believe. Fast 4G then, that's mm. good. Yeah. What would you prefer, to commute on a penny farthing mm. yeah. or on a unicycle, which I also saw someone do? In the rush hour, I was on the bus and I saw a guy in front hmm. who was keeping the bus and going faster because he was commuting on a unicycle. Was he on the street? On the he street, in, yeah, like, yeah. In the, road. In, in, in the bus lane, yeah, just, just cycling on. Was he, was he doing that thing in a unicycle where you go like a little bit forward and then you go back? He was at the traffic lights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to stop and he sort of kept doing that. But again, just wanted to push him off. 
I don't Shouldn't think no jury in the land would convict, I think, if that's uh, there. No, 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 no violence towards cyclists. Speaking of WTF things, mm. uh, so Tesco is going to be using some eye scanning technology on your face. What? Um, now, this is going to be in its petrol stations, and the idea is that it will scan your eyes mm. and right. it will be able to work out your age and your gender. You can tell and if it will you've be got a killer's to, eyes. You can tell if you've got a killer's eyes. And sell you uh, some murder weapons. <laughs> yeah. Like, you look like you've got a killer's eyes. How about some uh, this knife set? And a disposable barbecue because what else do you buy in petrol <laughs> a stations? A bag of lime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some sulfuric acid. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be to target ads at you whilst you're queuing. What do we, think, what do we think about that? Terrifying. Not that well. I, don't know. I mean, it, it. What it does is it scans your. Eye. I believe this is actually made by um, AmScreen, mm -hmm. the the kind of Amstrad sort of spin-off thing. It's a press release came so it's out. Lord Sugar, courtesy of uh, Lord Sugar's son. Actually, he was the one who kind of put his name to the press release, anyway, really? I think so. Okay. Um, but <laughs> so it's got that, but it's got that backing, so that's great. Um, yeah, what it does is it scans your eyes and it determines your gender and sorts you into, I think, one of three age categories. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you're like young, middle aged, or old, yeah. And then it targets an ad based on. So I don't know if you're a middle aged man, it might be like have a have a disposable barbecue. And yeah. if you're a young man, Just it might man. be like, have a disposable barbecue. That's all we sell here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, de-icer. Like would you like to buy some petrol? Yeah. <laughs> we, our infographic uh, suggests that you are looking for petrol. Mm. Well, the plan is also to expand the screens into as many supermarkets as possible. As humanly possible. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. I don't think there's much of like a time frame or anything on this. It's kind of just sort of starting to creep it's into kind of reality. So but it is, it's happening, folks. It's happening. My Right, so, what's happening. so the thing is, though, I mean, this is it is uh, it is anonymous, right? It doesn't like recognize your face and uh, and say, okay, that's Luke Westaway. Yeah, it's not like Luke. Some ads on do you him, want yeah. to buy another disposable barbecue? It's mm. like here's a, a handsome young man. Mm -hmm. Let's sell him a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> What about some so, firewood? Um, Big bag, bag of coals. <laughs> <laughs> some limp flowers. <laughs> you look like the age and gender of a person who could use some de-icer. <laughs> and uh, oh, some windscreen washer fluid. And, Castrol. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Protect oh. your engine before yeah. it starts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and some um, some roses in case there's something you forgot. Oh mm. yeah, I'll have to apologise. Take for. to your second the, wife. The, the thing is, I mean, <laughs> the, the, the thing about this though is that it's it's just it's just kind of closing the loop. They've always had information about you. Every, 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 yeah. every time you lose, use your your club card in Tesco or your Nectar card in Sainsbury's or, or any kind of mm. discount card or even your credit card or anything, these big entities have this information on you. They know like where you are. They can track your movements. So yeah. privacy wise, mm. it's not really. I actually. Doing anything I actually find this less creepy and invasive than, for example, the way that Google advertises in Gmail, which is to, um, as any Gmail user will know, mm. uh, scans the content of your email and gives you uh, something about that. So sure. if, for example, you're emailing your friend about a good barbecue you had at the weekend, it might be like, <laughs> at the top you'll get a banner saying, do you want to buy a disposable barbecue? Yeah. You can find them at tesco.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but only on the forecourts. So, Other uh, barbecue outlets are available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get barbecues any, seriously, anywhere you can get them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Station. I mean, it's, it's and nowhere else. <laughs> it's not the season, but wait for a dry winter day. Bang, you know, so we'll have one outdoors. indoors. Indoor barbecue is <laughs> brilliant. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> so, what I, I, yeah. I'm less concerned about the privacy side, and I'm more concerned about the fact that if they're going to be spending all this money on putting targeted ads at you whilst you're queuing, they're going to encourage shop attendants to slow down how long it takes to serve people so that there's more ad time being thrown at you whilst well, you queue. I, yeah, but by that logic, we should be like slowing down traffic so you've got more time to look at a billboard. Or and isn't in, that uh, the case with all those roadworks, Luke? Hmm? <laughs> what have I exposed? Who invented oh, roundabouts? It's wheels within wheels. So um, in Fahrenheit 451, uh, there's a, a future vision where uh, the, the, the cars go so fast that the billboards are much, much longer, so the highways are lined with these massive, huge, long billboards. Or you could have so like a, uh, one of those, um, is it a zoetrope when... You have loads of images flashing, and you see. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Like you'd have yeah. one of those. So as yeah. you're going around, you'd actually see. Um, Into time it, it itself. It would look like video, because you're seeing it yeah. like ten frames a second. They could just mm. put a video on them. At this point, they could just put a video on the billboard. Probably. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, if they probably. I'm, but the, yeah, I see what you mean. Fi mean. Final thing about this: the, my, my problem is not so much the thing. The reason that I hate this is not so much because of the privacy side of things, but more because of the fact that ads are everywhere. You can't even stand in a queue for two minutes to buy your barbecue uh, mm. without getting without having an ad flashing yeah. up at you so that's, it can that's ruin a barbecue mm. being advertised to mm. they'll have heavily. ads on the barbecue soon yeah ads on the meat 
adds in the smoke. It can come <laughs> up and be like, why not buy a disposable barbecue? <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if it was if it made the products cheaper. Like when you have certain, like websites that are free because they're ad supported. Hmm. That's mm-hmm. fine, but if you could go and I buy, them. if you could buy hate your, those free ad supported websites, yeah, yeah. if they you could buy a barbecue, yeah, if you could get worst. a barbecue for free, yeah. but it did give you some adverts on the side, you know, you're going to burn it. Mm. Like, that'd be fine. Ad support, ad supported products. Mm. Okay, cool. Well, uh, so we hate it. Right, fair enough. Uh, tell us what you think about uh, uh, Tesco ads and all the rest of it. While we move on to our new feature, it's the future. <laughs> So, Nexus 5, let's talk a little bit more about it. It's the uh, the new flagship Android phone. It's got Ooh. Android 4.4 KitKat on it. So, what do we think? What do we think of KitKat? Why don't we, why don't we talk about our favorite features? Andy, why don't you tell us what your favorite feature of Android 4.4 KitKat so, is? So, one of my favorite features is the ability, well, not the ability, it's what Google's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, it now combines your Google Hangout chats with your SMS and MMS chats. Okay. So, you've got these different inboxes, but all in one place. It's kind of like almost like the BlackBerry Hub or like mm. the Windows Phone um, Me Hub, but it's different because it's Google. <laughs> and okay. I like that. Um, I'd like it if you could do with more things, like if you could add services to it so you could have your WhatsApps going to the same place. And then you'd, you'd cool. only have just the one app for all of your um, incoming messages and stuff. And that'd be pretty cool, mm. which um, hopefully is something that could happen. Okay. It doesn't, but could. So, um, I mean, presumably no one's using Hangouts still. I use Hangouts all the time for chatting. Do you? All the time. Oh. So I use it. I use it as much as WhatsApp. He's using it right now. Never chats with me in a hangout. But anyway, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Luke, what's your favourite feature of Android 4.4 KitKat? My favourite. Well, so many to choose from. <laughs> oh no, wait. There are like no features to this <laughs> this new update <laughs> operating system. But there there is one thing that's kind of new. Mm. It's not really a cool new feature that you're going to enjoy, but <laughs> it is nevertheless good. Yeah. It is um, basically. Uh, Google says that it's massively slimmed down the memory requirements for um, KitKat so that it requires less memory, in fact, than Jelly Bean did, which is quite impressive because it's a a more advanced operating system, does have some new features, um, but it shouldn't require as much memory. Google says that this will run happily on a phone, an Android phone, that's um, that's got 512 uh, meg or megabytes of memory. I mm-hmm. think that that's right, isn't yep, it, Andy? That's yeah. Correct. So in theory, mm-hmm. you could put this on, uh, you know, really really old smartphones. Basically, mm-hmm. I mean that probably won't happen because that would require uh, Samsung to be like, oh, the Galaxy Ace that we left on ice cream sandwich two mm-hmm. years ago or whatever. Now. Let's update mm. it for the 10 people who own one and stuff. Mm. So I, I don't really think that that will be much mm. practical use probably, but if you are kind of a brave sort of Android tinkerer, this might be an operating system that will run on one of your older devices. If yeah, it's particularly tinkers, yeah. helpful if mm. you're for budget phones. It means that when uh, new phones, phones come out and it's only 80 quid, and it's, but it's only got a you know, single core processor and that low amount of RAM, yeah. it will be able to have the new KitKat on rather than at the moment, yeah. it's it's being lumped with the older stuff because it physically can't take it. But it would mean uh, you can have like the same software on all the phones. That would be cool. I, because kind of the, think, the thinking behind this is that it's going to ease the fragmentation problem. Absolutely. Because if if from if, right from today, all the phones can run KitKat, and mm. if future versions of Android have a, a similarly memory friendly uh, operating system. Mm. It's kind of like wiping the site clean a little bit. It's a bit like, okay, things aren't getting any more advanced. We're kind of holding it here for a while while every th- all the actual devices sort of catch okay. up a bit. Which is a big deal because if you look at uh, the, the the number of phones that actually have all the different types of Android, Jelly Bean, the most recent, is only on half, right? It's only just crept over the number the half the number of phones that are out yeah, there. Yeah, and that's basically only thanks to like the Samsung Galaxy recent phones. Mm. So like the, the Note 3 and the S4 sure. and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. I would kind of argue that there's something wrong with your operating system if it doesn't automatically just work on all phones. You know, you, maybe you shouldn't be. It's not. A, it's, it's. If it doesn't work on budget phones, maybe you shouldn't be selling it as a as an operating system that works on budget phones. Well, that's the thing. No one's um, no one's like selling it at all. It's just like the wild west, isn't it? Android. Mm. No one's kind of in charge of like quality control in, well, in, in that strict sense. But I mean, this this you know, if KitKat works on lots of you know other cheaper phones, mm. then that would be good. 
Yeah, we'll be good. Uh, uh, we we have, you know, it's, it's different to Windows Phone. By contrast, the whole point of Windows Phone is that it has go. very low, very, <laughs> very, low uh, <laughs> very low entry, very low barriers to entry. So that uh, yeah. even cheaper phones, you get the exact same Windows Phone experience. Mm. They're still the same speed. They're still the same, uh, the same you know, interface, same experience. The the problem is that, uh, the, or the, the, it's not the problem, but the, the thing that differentiates the cost is what's on there, like whether it's got a, the hardware, whether it's got a camera or not, where, that kind of thing. And I think that's a much better way of doing it than just having a phone that's got everything but is really rubbish because it doesn't it, because you know it, it's not capable of, of coping with the everything that it has on it yeah it just seems like a strange way of doing things but anyway. totes yo hmm. but you What's know your favorite feature rich well i'm glad you asked andrew because yeah, my you were telling me all about it earlier i, I was yeah, yeah, wouldn't yeah. shut up about it <laughs> yeah so my favorite feature is like call me up at midnight to tell me about this yeah i was asleep i was very excited yeah um, it's uh, so stuff goes full screen or something. Uh, I, I believe. Well, which well is, I'm uh, very excited. I mean, I could, I could just reiterate what you were telling me earlier. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I got this. I got this. So, uh, so, <laughs> so, I, so yeah. So the uh, the the lock screen um, uh, has goes full screen. So these, uh, and also when you're using uh, apps, then the, it goes full screen. So the status bar disappears at the That's top, right, right? So you don't so have you, your battery you, indicator and all that kind of stuff so when you, you're watching a movie. Yeah, you could have, for example, as you were telling me before, Rich, mm-hmm, you could have yes. like a full screen ebook with no annoying status bar yeah, at the top. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And um, I just know before with the lock screen, I, I agree that's a great feature because when I was using music or playing mm. podcasts, you'd see the album art in full on the lock yeah. screen, which is very visual, as you to seek through it and say, that's great, you're that's right. So, yeah, that's something else that Rich told me on the yeah, phone exactly, last night yeah, over yeah, the yeah. baby monitor that gives me direct access to it. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. You sleep at the foot of the, foot of the bed. Yeah, uh, so, kicking my leg when I'm dreaming. <laughs> so, if, I mean, if you're listening to this podcast on your new Nexus 5, for example, you could have your phone locked and you have an extra couple of millimetres of us on the screen. Let's see if, that, let's so see if that works. Mm, so yeah. lucky. Yeah. It won't work. <laughs> it should do. It, it worked. Um, I was well listening to um, Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast and that worked. And that looked cool. Yeah, other podcasts are available. Name drop in there. Uh, so, I'm, I mean, oh, so kick it's, I think we're a little bit underwhelmed by the new stuff in it, right? I mean, the memory thing is pretty cool, but that is a bit behind the scenes. Yeah, it's, it's more like change. cool it'll be better for Android in the future stuff mm. um, rather than exciting, oh, now you can do this. Mm. Actually, that's been the way with Android for a while. Um, mm. Like Jelly Bean brought some really cool features, but 4.3 definitely didn't. Mm. And 4. When did Google Now come really. along? Google Now was with Jelly Bean 4.2. Okay, the original. Yeah. Original yeah. Jelly Bean. So I think, that, I think that's really interesting. That's kind of becoming a bigger thing, isn't it, I believe? With Google Now, yeah. it, it is. They're still doing a lot of things with it and they're updating. Isn't it on the home screen now or something? It is on the home screen. Yeah. It's less of a home screen, kind of like Blink Feed is on the HTC One. Mm. Um, Google that's Now still does some, does some cool things, um, but it's Ooh. still... And you... Oh, sorry, go on. So it's, it's still totally re- um, reliant on you having sort of data connection all the time. Mm. Sometimes it can sort of flash up alerts and warnings and things that you just don't care about. Um, it's like yeah. on a Saturday, you'll say, "Oh, this is how long it will take you to get to the office." I'm, like, so, I'm not going to the office. I love it's that. Saturday. Shut no, up. I, I absolutely love that. So this is this is in uh, in KitKat, right? There's this this feature where uh, you make a calendar appointment, and it looks at where you are on the appointment, and then it looks at where your previous appointment was. There it is. Check it out. CNET full screen. Is CNET that, full screen. It's not full screen. I can see the status bar. No, no, no. But on the lock screen, the whole lock screen. That's for just the lock screen is showing okay. this whole. This is very oh, visual and yeah, looks yeah. quite cool. No, that is cool. And if yeah. you can see that on the old screen, Mark, maybe can I show you one of these cameras? That one there, maybe? We've got the old CNET red ball. Nice, lovely. Well, yeah, so... Um, so it's uh, jaw-dropping stuff, really. <laughs> it's amazing what they can you do have these to, days. You have to see it to believe it, really. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, you have to believe it to see it. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> one of the things that I really like is the fact that you've got your two calendar appointments, what you're doing in the morning, um, like your, uh, you've got an appointment for your, your morning uh, phone call to, uh, to your parents, mm-hmm. and then you've got, in the afternoon, you've got your afternoon trip to the off-license, right? And uh, what it can do is it can look at... Uh, Google automatically looks at where you are, mm. so it goes off-license, and then it goes phone yep. box, and then... Uh, it, it calculates the distance between them and it can set up another appointment that tells you the travel time. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. I think that's, that blows my mind. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm. Mm, good so stuff. Go. So, I mean, is there, is there anything else interesting about KitKat? Not really. We're, we're not really in terms of it, It's features. really the big thing is, is its memory usage for hopefully trying to sort out the fragmentation problem, which is still Android's biggest problem. Mm. Mm. Oh, you know what is cool, though? This isn't an, a KitKat thing, but mm. can we talk very briefly about Google Helpouts? Yes, okay, yeah, cool. sure. Okay, so Google's launched this other new feature called Help Outs, mm-hmm. which is basically you get video tuition from someone who knows how to video tutate um, to you across your tablet or anything. with a, So it's kind of a, a hangout with someone who's giving you advice. Exactly, a, a, a paid-for hangout. So, oh. for example, if Andy was great at, just for example, 
putting a barbecue together. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how to make a barbecue. I could pay Andy maybe $10 for an hour of his time over video and he would teach me how to do this. And if you want to, if you want to make a bit of cash on the side and you mm. like know guitar or know how to make like an amazing souffle, then you can kind of loan out your... Um, a medical degree. A med yeah, if you've got a medical degree, yeah. I think that's one of them actually. You can get like advice. I believe they're independently checked as well. I think medical ones are the only ones that are kind of checked. The rest of them, yeah. it's, it's free for I think I, my belief is that Google at the moment at least has a rudimentary uh, interview process I'm mm. reading so you might have to kind of convince Google that you really are that good at the xylophone <laughs> you really do know how to iron a shirt correctly if there is yeah. any interest in me giving online lectures in how to take the best selfies then please do let me know in the usual <laughs> contact first. ways yeah, yeah. his so. rates are and these are his words extortionate <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but very very worth it yeah. I don't Ooh. want to use the word life changing but it changed my life yeah. So there you go. Okay, cool. And uh, finally, let's let's wrap this up with the uh, Google Nexus Five. What do we think of that? Is that a great phone? I think the phone is a great phone. With one that sounded phone. big. That sounded like you weren't towing the party line, so we'd chopped together what you said based on <laughs> the times you had said those words. Yeah. Hi, different. Andrew Hoyle. <laughs> think the Nexus Five is a great phone. <laughs> Well, yeah. No, the phone itself is brilliant. And That's it's, how we made it's got, podcast, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's got some of the best tech around, and it's superbly powerful. The screen's great, and it's fairly slim, and does all the things well, and it's only £300, so that mm. is very, very, very cheap for what you get. Yep. The problem is the camera is pretty poor. Very, very disappointing, I found it. Um, and it's not, it's not dreadful, is it? It doesn't take like really bad pictures it's just not quite as good as you know it's not like a couple of years ago what a bad phone camera would have been no no it's not awful but it so will it's as good as like the nokia lumia 1520 for example i mean that's a, that's a hell of a phone that's the 1020. 1020, yeah. 1020 well, is amazing. Well, the 1520 will be. <laughs> They're, They're all great. They're all great. So but, um, amazing. Yeah, it's very, which is um, very disappointing because it does mean so if, you, if you want the whole package, you want a good camera, like the S4 has got a good pack. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> You were starting what? to smile at me. And no, I, I was just thinking about barbecues. There's Go, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Than, than um, yeah. yeah, it means that that's a, that is a big, um, a big drawback. Um, but okay. if you don't really care about cameras and you just want something for some quick yeah. snaps at, at best, and you, if you're going to use Instagram anyway, it doesn't really matter. Okay, cool. So that's a yes from you, Luke. Uh, I'm going to say it's a great phone, but mm. I have to confess to being a little bit disappointed okay. because uh, the Nexus 4 was so great, mm. and I'm a, I'm a bit. Uh, depressed. Depressed is a strong word. <laughs> Glum. That, um, <laughs> a little blue. Yeah, distraught. <laughs> um, that it's not as cheap as the Nexus 4 was. I know right. it's still very cheap. £299 is makes it the best value, best value smartphone mm. you can buy. That's not in question. But it's not as good value as the Nexus 4 was yeah. a year ago. So and I'm you can't buy the Nexus 4 anymore. You can't buy the Nexus 4 anymore. Mm. I think you, it's Google's not quite it a no-brainer in the same way that Nexus 4 was. Yeah. It was very much yeah. a, oh my god, this is amazing, and it's 240 quid. Mm. There's literally no reason to buy any yeah. other phone. The ne now. Nexus that, that 4 was kind of like stockpile one. them now, yeah. buy as many as you can. Don't even think about anything else. You'd yeah, be a fool your mom, to buy. Your dad, yeah, your you'd dog. be a fool to buy any other Android phone or any other phone or anything else, <laughs> any other item. Yeah. Um, Need a barbecue? No, <laughs> get the Nexus 4. Let's <laughs> well, not go crazy. <laughs> but um, but I mean, the Nexus 5 just has. Hasn't, has, hasn't quite had that same amazingness, and I think sure. that's because it's a little bit more expensive. Mm. I think it's got. I think I hope that Google doesn't succumb to function creep. The fact that it's it's become five inches, it's uh, it's got more stuff in it, it's slightly more expensive, and the Nexus Five, you know, stick with what it was was great at, which was having a bunch of really good stuff for yeah. a really 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 good price. Exactly. I kind of wonder sort of if, if maybe they'd have gone with like a slightly cheaper processor or something, or mm. maybe kept the screen at 720, which would be disappointing because it wouldn't be so high flying. But mm. if they'd have if that have made like 200 pounds then like ah mm. yeah. I think and it kick out supposed to run even if you don't have all that much memory exactly yourself, yeah so. they don't want to gild the lily they don't want to over egg the pudding I think mm. it would have been um, a bigger letdown if it had have gone for lower end specs because it's supposed to be the best it's going to be showing off the best stuff like mm. it's a it's a it's a reference device fundamentally to it's a reference device really for the show... software though not for the hardware well, yeah, but it's kind of all round, sort of showing what what this stuff can do. So also, got... would it be the worst thing if Google's reference device was a bit like, "Whoa, Nelly, hold back. Yeah. Let's have a slightly less powerful processor. Mm. We don't need them to be this powerful. This is how powerful it should be to run this software brilliantly." Yeah, maybe that could serve as an example for other manufacturers, and then we'd get phones with slightly better battery life, and they'd be a bit cheaper as well. 
Wise words. Words to live by. Well, um, on that note, let's uh, see what you guys think. Uh, do you agree with Luke? Do you agree with uh, with Andy? Drop us a line on at CNET, uh, at CNET UK on Twitter, uh, Facebook us, um, or brick through the window, whatever you want to do. Really. Whatever you want to yeah. do. Should mm. be feedback. Uh, tin, two tin cans on a long piece of string. Uh, and let's go to the feedback. Facebook. Checking into places. Facebook. Being stopped by strangers. We've got loads of feedback this week, and it's great, so I didn't want to cut any out, but it does mean that I want quick-fire answers from both of you. Okay. okay. Chris McShortle says, Is the Nexus 5 a worthwhile upgrade from the Nexus 4, or should I hold off for a while? If you've already got a Nexus 4, then... Probably not. Yeah. But I don't know what you're holding off for, because... It's it won't get. Probably, it's not, yeah, this probably is it. This won't is the get. end now. No more. Nothing else. Is happening. <laughs> this is, this is, this is it. I what think. Is, what else is happening? I suppose we're we're into the next round of S6 yeah. iPhone six. Yeah. You're not going to see many other big smartphones this year. Well, we've got S5. the Moto G launching next week, and that's supposed to be <laughs> quite a decent, cheap. <laughs> Moving on. I needed uh, that. Andy. <laughs> Sorry. No. Yeah. Moto. The Moto G, for all we know, is amazing. Yeah. So, if you want, hold off on buying the Nexus five to see what Motorola's cooked up. <laughs> but um, you know. Don't you know, Chris, if you want the Nexus 5 and just go for it. Yeah. Uh, Raphael Co says, is there a chance Apple would make a 13 or 15 inch iPad Air? So a big iPad. What do you no, think? I think no. Yeah, not a chance in hell, I don't think. Okay, uh, Matty Wilson says, Nexus 5 related, why is there only two gigs of RAM when the Note 3 has three? Uh, and a big thing for me, why is it only an eight megapixel camera when a lot of new phones, including the phone it's based on, got a 13 megapixel camera? Uh, when let's face it, it's not exactly an expensive part for the phone. Um, so well, yeah, good point. There? Two gig is a lot of RAM for a phone, mm. particularly when it doesn't need as much memory. That's kind of the point. Mm. Uh, so that's absolutely fine. Eight megapixel camera would be fine. Bearing in mind the iPhone 5s has an eight megapixel camera, but that one is actually a very, very good camera. Yeah, what and would be better if it just made the camera. Better. better. Yeah, yeah, it's not about the megapixels. It's not about is the it? megapixels. And actually, a big problem with the Nexus 5, I was, I was watching you try and take pictures, was the autofocus is a bit naff. It's like it struggles really. You have to yeah. keep tapping on the same thing before mm. it kind of goes, oh, I see what you're trying to, I see what you're up to. Mm. So that's a bit annoying. Uh, moving on, Andrew Lemon says, this is my favorite question mix a tap or separate hot and cold taps? Mix a tap. I, I am amazed and disappointed that the UK has not embraced the mixer tap mm. in the way that the rest of the world has because it's so obviously better i think mm. the mixer tap if you want force it for our international uh, listeners and viewers oh, yeah. force it yeah is that what a force is yeah it's a tap is it? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but the, what, the only problem with mixer taps is that they come in all different things. Like, you, like regular hot and cold taps, you pretty much just turn them on, right? You turn them on like that. Yeah. Viewers. And uh, uh, but with mixer taps, there's like there's like a handle or a paddle or a button you've got to press. Or yeah, but know. it's not that complicated. It's like it's basically just a lever that you swing from left to right and up and down. It's like yeah, a gear but, stick. Well, <laughs> so it's like that rather than like that. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, moving on. Uh, anyway, mixer tap. Mm. Uh, we all agree. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm turning page. Uh, Jai Vishnu Prabhakar says, "What phone to buy? My budget is 10k." Uh, no, we're a little confused <laughs> no, about sorry. this question. We're a little confused about that because that's quite a lot of money for a phone. So we're thinking that that might be another currency. We suspect this may be one of our international viewers and listeners to whom we say Namaste uh, <laughs> and Bienvenue, welcome, welcome, and uh, Hola. Hola, yes. Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, let us know, um, uh, Jai Vishnu. I think, I think you could, with that much money, get a Vertu. Uh, yeah, they're, get they're a, rubbish, but they cost 10K. Yeah, get they're a Vertu they, TI. Uh, they have a concierge service on the Vertu phone, so you could get your concierge to fetch you a better phone. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, Excellent news. Chris Blackman money. says, do you guys prefer any particular Android launcher? I'm currently switching between the new Google launcher, Aviate, Action, and Thema. Um, so a couple of other people commented that Nova is is quite good. I've had a bit of a go with Nova. Seems all right. Um, I've uh, try, I've seen the Knox um, uh, theme for Nova is is quite good. I know some people okay. use that in the office. It's quite clean, but I don't think that one is free. Um, I've also tried Go Launcher, but mm. I don't know. I never use it. I struggle to see what the difference is with a lot of them. To be honest, at the it's risk of sounding hugely ignorant, what's an Android launcher? An Android launcher is um, a thing you download from the Google Play Store, and mm. it basically reskins uh, Android, so it just changes the look of the icons and the and the background stuff like that. So. Google is and so Android is Brace so bad. for Windows Phone comments. You've got to download an Android app to make Android look less no. like Android. Android is so flexible that you can download a different launcher. I don't know. You wouldn't get that on Windows Phone anyway. You definitely wouldn't. No. Uh, James David Marlin says Ender's Game, Hobbit 2, or Thor. Well, we can discount Hobbit 2 for a start. Uh, no. 
What? You can't discount The Hobbit too. Yes, it's got Smaug in it, <laughs> which is uh, we have pronounced Smaug. I thought we always thought it was Smaug. Yeah, obviously. it is Smaug. Yeah, it is Smaug. But they say Smaug, and apparently in proper like Elvish or whatever, it should be Smaug. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, That's not how Smaug speaks. <laughs> he has the rumbling tones of an authoritative Benedict Cumberbatch. He does, Not yeah. your mock geeky <laughs> voice. Uh, I haven't seen Ender's Game, but the, there's one thing that strikes me about the trailer for this, right? I might be completely missing the point of this, but there's a bit... So the whole point of the film is about Ender's this little kid, right, who can think differently to all other uh, human beings, right, so he can defeat these aliens, okay? And he can think in ways that people never thought before. Okay. So there's a bit... In the, and that's demonstrated with a bit in the trailer and, and generally in the film where um, there's some aliens, like, high, uh, uh, floating above an alien spaceship in space floating above some asteroids right aliens. and Ender has this brilliant idea instead of just flying straight up to them he flies under the rocks and then shoots them through the asteroids right and everyone's Classic like Ender. and everyone's Classic like Ender. no one's ever done that before why he's, he's, he's the one he's most must be a prodigy he can save us if you're in space army and you don't realize <laughs> space that, army. You can come, <laughs> that space means you can fly around from any direction <laughs> and shoot people from anywhere you neither deserve to be in space or in uh, the army you're the best cadet that the space army's ever seen general <laughs> <laughs> but you're not the pilot your father was exactly yeah. also and uh, austin scott card massive homophobe so mm. oh dear although um, it does a quite good idea want to see it cool okay. uh, we didn't really answer that but then we'll <laughs> Hobbit too. Glenn Swingler says, I want a seven inch tablet that will make calls. What do you recommend? Asus pad phone. All right, easy, done. Easy. Uh, cool, moving on. Callum Fian says, do you think a service like Netflix is worth the money? If so, what service gives you more selection for your money? Now more selection is really tricky because mm. basically you've got Netflix and Love Film, none of the others. And are... Now TV. And Now TV, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I personally prefer Netflix because it's a lot better for TV, yeah, um, and because they have like their own original stuff, and they're mm. quite good at the TV shows. Love Film is better for movies, but I don't find it very good generally. Mm. Also, um, beware of like how many things they say they have, because there's a lot of rubbish on all of it. It's like mm. Spotify says it has 50 bazillion songs, but mostly it's like karaoke versions of Call Me Maybe, which mm -hmm. is. Great, yeah. but you know you only really need one. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think Netflix is if you can get on the American Netflix, um, which we don't recommend because it's it's very very bad. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, then yeah, and there's a lot more uh, choice. Um, but Now TV is actually really good for for movies because they, it's it's a Sky service, so it has loads of new mu new new movies. New movies. <laughs> new movies. So it has lots of new films. So that's that's pretty cool. cool. Um, but it's uh, it's you know paying for all of them is a bit uh, is a bit much. All right, Dominic Stewart says I can't make out if the Kindle Fire has the normal e-ink screen for reading books nope. or is it a backlit screen which strains the eyes um, Dominique it is not an e-ink screen it is like a regular tablet mm. or like phone so it's not electronic ink it's proper backlit so it might strain your eyes um, Dominique also asks can you play normal .avi's or xvids on it um, I would be amazed if you can do that mm. um, kind of off the it's bat. very locked down, isn't it? It's Kindle. pretty locked down. Kind of fire um, is very locked down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark Edwards says, "Got to discuss Resgate, <laughs> um, the PS4 running higher than the Xbox One." So this is no. a story. That's right. So this is a story that the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Oh, the humanity! How both, can they get away with this? Oh, the huge manatees. Both about to come out, uh, but uh, two new games for it: Call of Duty Ghosts and Battlefield 4. They both run at 720p on the Xbox One, but 1080p on the PS4. Now, the reason for this is, this drop in resolution on the Xbox One, is because um, the publishers wanted both games to run at 60 frames per second because that makes the action smoother. And it's better for very, very quickly shooting your friends in the face <laughs> over and over again. Right. Um, but it is a little bit rubbish that the Xbox One can't handle 60 frames per second, 1080p, of it, you know, on its first launch game. You know, this is a console that's going to be kind of out there for seven years. Mm. It's possible maybe with more optimization, they'll get better mm. at um, squeezing uh, more resolution out, out of it. Like a lemon. Like a lemon. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Andy. Oh my, oh my <laughs> I thought you'd input. gone quiet for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were able to chip in at that crucial moment. <laughs> I'm going to address the next question at Andy. Okay. Um, Ian Luden says, new Nexus 10, when? Don't know. <laughs> Great. Okay, there's, been some, there's been some leaks, but we don't know. We, we thought maybe it will arrive in the Nexus uh, 5 did, um, but it was a no-show. So who knows? It could be this year. It could be next year. It could never happen. Right now, don't really know. But stay tuned, because we'll let you know when it does. Okay. Uh, Jake Chandler says, why is your journalism so biased and ignorant? Why, what's that, Jake? Why are we so amazing? Well, I don't I know, Jake. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's that's a really lovely question, Jake. Thank you so much, Jake Chandler. I don't know about super Facebook. handsome, but yeah, I mean, I, I we're definitely, so. we definitely screw up well, down. I agree. Yeah. Things yeah. like that are hard to quantify. Yeah. You know, how has, what is beauty? You know, yeah. the difficult questions. By the way, thanks 
Thanks, Jake. We, uh, yeah, uh, we appreciate it. Keep listening to the podcast. Yeah, like and it. finally, Mark Foster says, which superhero has the best tech? Andy Man. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Man does have a lot of phones. He's got a lot of phones. Condor mm. Man. I don't know if you've ever seen Condor Man. It's a Disney movie from the 80s with Michael Crawford in. And he has, uh, he's a comic book artist who draws a fictional character called Condor Man. And, and then he brings him to life and makes it himself. And he has things like, he has this kind of like... Um, Condor Man. Uh, <laughs> Condor what, Man. That's actually, oh, Condor that, Man. That's oh. actually what I heard as well. Yeah, <laughs> Condor Man. Like, that sounds like an awful That's because they're like rich, I don't know, but that's not cutting edge technology. <laughs> Play it safe, kids. <laughs> uh, is it uh, Iron Man or Batman? Who's, who's it going to be? Uh, Batman. No, oh, uh, Green Lantern's uh, ring that does anything. That's pretty. Te- that's pretty high. That's tech. pretty high tech. But it's like Alien. It's cheating. Mm. Um, no, Iron Man because he can fly. If Batman was that clever, he could fly. <laughs> he's got the. He's got the bat. Yes. You mean the plane? Yeah. I can fly in a plane. <laughs> that, 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 that's not. That doesn't count either. Uh, yeah, Iron Man. You have flown in a plane, in fact, have, which means you must be Batman. Plane. Yeah. I will point out for oh, the no. sake of transparency that I've seen Batman. I have not seen any of the Iron Mans. Iron Men. I think you've not seen any Iron Men. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right. Thanks, everyone. Keep the feedback coming at facebook.com slash UK official. Tweet us at CNET UK or drop us a line at podcast at cnet.co.uk. That's right. And head to the Apple App Store or Google Play to download the uh, CNET Global app. Just search CNET Global and then you can get your iPhone or Android app uh, and see all the latest news, reviews and videos like this one here. Uh, speaking of videos. Yes. Um, we want to show you the secret Google Easter egg that is hidden in Android 4.4 Kit. Cats. Pretty mm-hmm. cool. It's very cool. Um, Andy and I made a little tutorial, like walk through, show you what it is, how to get it. We won't spoil it, but it's pretty fun. So have a look, see what Google's hidden there in there. Actually, Easter eggs in it, which I was a bit disappointed about. But yeah. there you go. Well, here's some chocolate. And finally, what is Automatone reviewing this week? This week, Automatone is reviewing what else? Mm-hmm. The Nexus 5. Okay, tell us what we need to know. <laughs> that that explains it actually. That 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 makes it all clear. Yeah. So now we know. I'm definitely going to run out and either spend all my money or not. What? Sorry. Clarify, Tomato. Got it. Got gotcha. it. Right. Okay. Thank you, Tomato. Thank you very much, Andy. Cheers. Thank you, Luke. Thanks very much to our producer, Mark. Right. We're off to do our weekly shot. Oh, Luke, you're bad at math. <laughs> <laughs>